Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Hey, Team Dave Meltzer, right on top of it at 8 a.m. Everybody, Friday's training is about time management. One of my favorite things to talk about, how to bend time, how to create time, how to be efficient, effective, and statistically successful with time. You can make money with time. You can be happy with time. I'm going to talk about time. Jake, great to see you. Justin, welcome. Excellent, everybody. Uh, Come on board here. We got a great, great day planned here. Welcome, everybody. Um, Good morning, Colleen. Uh, Labib. Hey, hey, hey. If you have not checked out Labib, my favorite perceptionist, uh, thank you for allowing me to post this up here. If you haven't joined me on a Friday or watched the replay, those are available uh, on my podcast uh, of the trainings, but they're 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. You got to register. You can email me directly, david at dmeltzer.com. Mac Daddy, good morning. Liv, good morning. Welcome to California. Uh, sorry that I haven't been able to see you, but we want to keep everybody healthy and happy and keep Bubby, most of all, safe. Anyway, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time is training every Friday. Replays are available on my podcast on Mondays. Check it out, the playbook. But just email me, david at dmeltzer.com. If you want to get a free book as well or the guides, exercises, go ahead. You can text me, 949-298-2905 or david at dmeltzer.com. Do you have any advice for a student who will further their student? Do you have any advice for a student who will further their student? If I understood it, I would. Um, (laughs) uh, Matthew Zachary, there he is. The stupid cancer dude. That's awesome. Let's see here. Welcome, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday here in America. There he is. Hey there. How are you? You are my, uh, I'm very old. It's my first Instagram live, so you're welcome. Oh, my God. You know, I was thinking I should keep a list of first Instagram lives because being of a more elder statesman of Instagram, I get to... They they should be paying me because I acclimate more people to Instagram <laughs> Live that never would be on it. And now that it looks like they're going to uh, cancel out TikTok in America, we'll yeah. see what happens to Instagram. And I, I will give some heads up props because Gary V, you know, my mentor, was all behind TikTok. My guy, Justin, who both of us love Gary, right? Literally, he ne- anything Gary said was like God to him, right? And this was the one thing from day one. He's like, Dave... We're not doing TikTok. We're not doing TikTok. We're not doing TikTok. It's gonna be, you know, it's th- this. It's gonna be kicked out, right? And yeah. there it is, my boy Justin Pugh. Major props for sticking up. Uh, and no, no disrespect to Gary, man. He's incredible, but uh, he may have been wrong on on one on one occasion. <laughs> anyway, you do incredible work. I had to have you on. Uh, let me know what you have going on right now. Uh, you know, I, I love the Stupid Cancer. Sh- is it Stupid Cancer Show uh, as well that you have? It was called the Stupid Cancer Show. It was radio, old school radio. Before the word <laughs> podcast was a word, it was radio. <laughs> I love radio. That's where I started. I had the Sports Blender on Angels Radio. Uh, that wow. was my ra- radio and the Gal Media guys. And I still, I still think if you're a financial planner and you want to get to like 70 to 90 year olds with huge money, you know, like you should be advertising on radio still. Yeah, <laughs> it's single sensory communication, right? We don't have that much anymore these days. No, it's beautiful. So anyway, tell me what's going on today and, and how we can help. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I've am I'm been called the Howard Stern of healthcare, a bit of a shock jock on the airwaves, had the first healthcare podcast, which was a radio show in 2007. <laughs> and I, I, launched, um, I launched a nonprofit, uh, 10 years out of my own cancer diagnosis called Stupid Cancer, which is still a thriving uh, nonprofit for young adults with cancer. I stepped down a year and a half ago and I started a new enterprise called Off Script Media. And we are basically advocacy radio. We are a, the gimlet of healthcare advocacy, patient advocacy, patient experience, and patient education. And it fills a very nice little niche in the market between where audio and education connect in healthcare. You know, it's interesting with everything going on with COVID, you know, we forget about the daily problems uh, and challenges that we have, you know, and, and I'm thinking going, all right, you know, there's still accidents, there's still cancer, right. there's, there's all these things. And 
that's the main to to me critical life issue in America is we need to keep our health institutions functioning in order to not only take care of the people who, you know, get this terrible virus and need help, but the daily healthcare needs of America have been already jeopardized and diminished. But, you know, in some states now, they're really at jeopardy, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you said it yourself, like life doesn't stop when another major disaster, I mean, if the asteroid comes, then forget it, we're all done. But right. at, at this point, you know, the, the, the stuff below the surface still happens every day. My mother just last Friday was rushed to the ER with a, a deep vein thrombosis and nearly died. Not COVID, just a thing that happened. You know, three days ago, another friend of mine's kid had brain cancer diagnosed. Like life goes on. So irrespective of the obvious, you know, I, I, I'll say shiny object with, with a lot of asterisks against it, stuff's really, cancer doesn't go away, rheumatoid arthritis doesn't go away. There's still someone entering that new, I didn't ask to be in this cancer store that has to do some shopping, that has no greeters. That's the role we're playing. And believe it or not, like I hate to say booming business, but COVID really did interject the whole COVID and cancer narrative to millions of Americans who are now predisposed with immunodeficiencies that are more um, hypersensitive to exposures. And wherever you are on the spectrum of politics, it doesn't matter if you have leukemia and your radiation Blah, it doesn't matter who you want to vote for president. You can be affected by this be just by the nature of you having gone through that experience and who's got your back uh, when you're in the cancer centers, when you're talking to your, uh, your, your clinical care coordinators or your insurance companies. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I've spent a majority of my career in sports and one of the big campaigns that I've always assisted with is Stand Up for Cancer. And mm -hmm. it's well-publicized national campaign. And obviously, you know, uh, with the V Foundation and the work that we've done there, et cetera. But I, I almost wish you could have, you know, like instead of stand up for cancer, mask up for cancer, because I think well, people, yeah. ha you know, it, it, it's become so political. And I understand the political aspect of it, right? That I'm not going to do what somebody tells me to do. Uh, and unfortunately, it's taken that rhetoric because it's not you're being told to do something, it's you're being asked to be uh, human right like we this is humanity uh th this is not uh de democrat or republican or independent this is humanity and that you know and i have teenage girls and it's and, and they're not political they're just stupid you think cancer's stupid like no teenagers <laughs> are like far beyond you think the internet is stupid no no yeah. teenagers like to be able to sit them down and these are straight a educated intellectual academic uh, teenagers and still uh, no insult to them as they're watching they're just stupid uh, but <laughs> literally I, I have kids who I know have COVID and I'm watching them they, they have been tested positive and on 4th of July I'm walking watching them walk by me on the street with no mask on yeah, right I like, have like, a... literally I'm like you understand there's like a hundred people on this street you, and they all have a hundred homes and somebody knows somebody with cancer, somebody knows somebody over 70, somebody knows somebody that has asthma, somebody knows, and where, where are we thinking everybody? What, what are we thinking, that this is gonna go away? I mean, I, I had um, um, Dr. Bob Bollinger, the head of infectious disease at Hopkins, I had him on my show out of patients a couple of weeks ago, and we were just joking around this idea that if you're factoring in risk models and exposure, how do you factor in non-compliant, which is the nice scientific way of saying stupid people not listening to what's in the best interest of the population. <laughs> so they factor in 33% non-compliance. So they're factoring in risk models in major hotspots that if 33% of the population just ignores everything and like spits in everyone's face all day, every day, that's where we're gonna get. So they're fully aware of non-compliance because non-compliance non is factored into every scientific model in anything in healthcare. Are you gonna take your drugs? Are you gonna go back to the doctor? Are you gonna do a test? Are you gonna do your PT and your rehab? Non-compliance and mask wearing is just as uh, consider, uh, considered as a factor in outcomes with COVID in this country. It's so interesting because both of us deal in outcomes, you know, obviously me in the entrepreneurial and sports space and the inspirational space, and it is the same exact reference in, in the medical or healthcare space is that People don't, if you can't see the outcome, right. if we don't, and, and I believe there's a, a, a curve that says the closer the outcome is to our action, the more responsive or, or attentive we are, right? And right. it works in, in, in your area in healthcare, 
it's it, it's nice if you know if i smoked one cigarette and got sick immediately it would be really nice because mm -hmm. people wouldn't smoke right? right but you know this much compromise can ruin your divine destiny when you're 60 and it's it's right. too late to say oh I really shouldn't have smoked cigarettes for the last 40 years. I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, confirmation bias is inversely proportional to proximity of death. So Say that one more time slower so everybody learns that. Confirmation bias is inversely proportional to the proximity of death to yourself. So you start to look at if I can't see it, if I can't feel it, it's not a thing that I worry about, which is why we look at like the, you know, uh, the environmental climate change conversations, that, that it's something that we can't possibly see all well, yet you and I are old enough to remember seasons. <laughs> we used to have four seasons a year. You yeah. know, that's something pretty tactical that we could see. But, you know, how do you, how do you factor in that? Is this an imminent threat to me today? And I just, that speaks to a larger conversation about the, the great experiment that is this country. Yeah, well, I love to even take your statement and put another inversion on it, which is success works the same way. Success works the same way. Positivity works the same way. And that... They don't see acceleration in exponential growth and compound interest in what we do right as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, what I th found most interesting in the quarantine session was how quickly the inverse proportionality of the environment showed signs. There was instant gratification to remind people that, wow, you know, we have all of this impact that we can reverse and that we can have a positive impact. And whether it's money, growing a business, relationships, your health, the positive aspect of, of what you're talking about works in the exact proportionality as the negative as well. And so I want people to listen to us and say, hey, yeah, th this is true. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so I grew up on Staten Island. My parents are still on Staten Island. And then when all this happened and everything shut down, the deer and the turkeys and the wolves and the, all the animals came back into the and the air got clean and like smog was down 40 percent. you could see the city like it was bizarre to think you, you hit the brakes on society for a month and oh my god nature starts to reclaim itself so instantly you know it reminds me of george carlin's bit about how the earth will be just fine without people you know it's called the earth plus plastic you can google it it's just a phenomenal bit about how we don't matter to this planet this planet doesn't care about us but wow what an impact we have on it yeah, no doubt. And he also has a, a great one about stupidity. Just I think he says, uh, if you think people are stupid, take half of that or two, twice as stupid as you think or something. He's, <laughs> he's incredible. Um, have, by the way, you're from Staten Island, you know, being the uh, Howard Stern of healthcare. Uh, did you see the Staten Island movie uh, with the kid from Sarah um, Live? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what's his face? Um, Pete Davidson is Pete my Davis wife's. He's my wife's cousin. Really? Uh, yeah, he is. So I have not seen the film. Uh, it's, it's on my like to do list of things to do when the world starts to settle. I mean, I'm not a Netflix binging guy, but I know a lot of the people that were part of it. And it, you know, it, if you're from Staten Island, you don't really want the movie because it's not really Staten Island. But you know, it's like they filmed War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise on Staten Island. That wasn't really Staten Island. Right, so, right. Like, you, when you're there, it's, it's different. But uh, my, I, it's on my Amazon or Netflix wish list. <laughs> Weird Science was filmed at Occidental College where I went to school. So was no Beverly way. Hills. The Beverly Hills 90120, whatever, all those. That definitely wasn't what Occidental was like. But uh, I totally <laughs> understand. Anyway, uh, where can people find you now and what can we do to help? Well, I'm, I'm back behind the mic as uh, I've been called America's patient advocate. I kind of like that term. I hope it sticks. But out of patients, patients like you're a hospital patient, not I'm inpatient. Uh, or I'm the only Matthew Zachary with a podcast. So just search my name and I'm hyper Googleable. But I'm encouraging people to be their own advocate, uh, take control of what they, uh, what they can when life gets in the way. And to recognize that, you know, you, you can have a choice, even if you're not aware that you have a choice when your life is on the line in the healthcare system. So out of patients.com, uh, Matthew Zachary, and that's my podcast. Awesome. Well, I appreciate everything that you do. I'm gonna go do some binge uh, listening and watching as well. <laughs> uh, you, you caught my interest. I love your personality. And I love your cause. So thank you so much for helping all of us. Thank you, David. Take care. Peace. Take care. Great to meet you. Thank you for all your right. first Instagram live. Yes. Welcome. Put them on right. my list. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Matt. Matthew Zachary, check him out. Uh, really interesting how exponential growth and acceleration work. Uh, and looking on to there, uh, the off script media out it 
patience with Matthew Zachary. You got it. Thank you, everyone. Join me Friday. We're going to talk about time, time management, the use of time, and uh, making sure that people are productive, accessible, and gracious with their time and doing the best they can to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. It's always at 11 a.m. Pacific. You can catch the replays on Monday on the podcast, The Playbook. Check it out. It's doing really well. Thank goodness people are learning. We did a BYOQ last week. Bring your own questions. I brought the answers. We'll do that once a month as well. Doing a pitch competition July 24th. You can reach out to me, David at dmeltzer.com. Free books, free exercises, free training. Register or 949-298-2905. Uh, morning routines. I think you have to have a daily routine, Ashley, and an adaptable routine when uh, things are not uh, going the way that they, they are. Looking for my boy, Marky Mark. Uh, you on here, my friend. Uh, we got the iconic guys. I have uh, iconic pictures and paintings all over my house and my office, inspiring people. You see them almost every day, uh, whether my green screen or the actual office, uh, as we are protecting people. Let's see. Let's take a quick question or two. Let's see who's on here. Andrew, Blaine, Matthew. Good. I don't see any of the rest of the team that we talked to yesterday. How can I gain the discipline to stay more consistent during the weekends? There we go. That's the question I needed to answer. Um, first of all, when you start deciphering your days into activity you get paid for and activity you don't get paid for and you vacation every day and you have activity you get paid for every day, uh, you're going to be able to have non-distinguishment. Every day will be a weekend and every day will be an activity you get paid for a day. Uh, awesome. There. Oh, Remember me? What's up, man? How are you? I'm getting that free uh, that free plug on on all your content. I see me in the back. Heck yeah, man! I love your stuff. I have my Buddha uh, meditation studio has three three of the four children ones that you gave me. Imagination. I didn't fit four, <laughs> and then I have the uh, money doesn't buy happiness, which I love, and then do it one percent better is in my other studio. They're all the backdrops. I love it, man. Thank you. It means the world. Oh, dude, you're incredible. Iconic's incredible. Uh, I have not talked to you in too long. I'm so proud of you, the stuff that you're doing, helping to inspire so many people. What do you got going on right now? Uh, I actually just took a trip to Miami for almost a month with a couple of my buddies, kind of got off the grid, uh, reset, recharged, reevaluated life. Uh, it was a very interesting trip. I've been back for like a week now, just staying in here, being safe, quarantining. And um, yeah, man, we launched kids maybe three, four months ago. It's been a huge initiative for us. It's doing really well so far, super fulfilling. And um, yeah, man, just work as usual. Obviously, it's a little different, people working from home, um, but it's been a real eye opener. Very just, just this whole entire thing, this whole entire world right now has been super awakening for myself personally, the team personally and individually. And then as a whole, holistically as a team, I mean, we're performing better remotely. So it's just yes. a really time right now. Yeah, us too. In fact, I closed back down and went remote uh, this Monday. Just I saw, you know, a huge surge of I have a lot of younger people that work with me and I just didn't feel as if uh, I could be responsible enough to have everybody together and going home to their families and grandparents and asthma people and all of that. What, um, I, you know, I love you and your team's perspective. We share a, a lot of the same values. Um, but I'm always interested, you know, being able to take that month down in Miami. What were some of the takeaways or at least one takeaway? Uh, you know, there's always some sort of anointment that comes when you, we take time that you're like, shit, I never even thought of that. Biggest game changer for me um, was I got a trainer, a gym trainer. And, you know, I always preach self-awareness. And uh, growing up, I was a big soccer player and I always had a, a group trainer. And then up until then, I always uh, kind of downplayed it. Like, hey, why do I need a trainer? I'm self-motivated. Uh, why do I need a life coach? I'm self-motivated. Um, you know, why would I need to go on like a dating app? I can just go find a woman. Um, and for me, um, I kind of, I touched out in Miami and the guy that I was living with, I got the house with, just had a trainer. And then I liked it the first day. And then I went 24 days in a row with a trainer. And it was absolutely game changing for me, um, just because it pushed me harder. Uh, the consistency was obviously there. And for me, I just it completely flicked the switch that now um, I've been I've been breaking for this week. I'm about to start up again. I'm just going to get a trainer every single day. I just realized that it's what's best for me. 
And I think that's just something that you could take to other areas of your life. Um, just, I guess, just to try things. Um, and I tried it. I love it. And for me now, um, it's a little different as far as, you know, you were talking about morning routines, having to adapt. Um, for me, the one non-negotiable while I was in Miami was just that every single day I'd have a trainer. And I just saw that just mentally, uh, obviously physically, it was a huge difference. And for me now, uh, I can't see myself going without a trainer. So uh, for me, it was um, getting a fitness trainer. It's something I can't see myself going without now. It's so interesting because I went through the same revelation, right? I, you know, played college sports and I always had coaches and trainers and then got out, never needed one and then got older and didn't realize, you know, I'm telling everybody you should have three mentors always in the situation that you want to be in, right? In mm -hmm. other words, I have a health coach uh, and, you know, I use Kenzai uh, as well. And I have trainers, nutritionists, sleep, all of the different mentorship. Uh, I train or coach a lot of uh, ex-athletes, celebrities, entertainers in business, in entrepreneurship. You know, these are people who make a fortune uh, and are at the top of their game. The funniest thing is they got there by having a coach. And then when they transition out into the business world, they immediately, like you and I, we transition yeah. over and we're like, well, we, we need coaches for all of this stuff. Well, meanwhile, our health is the most important thing. It's the number one priority. I put it before my family. I put my health before everything, thanks to my wife giving me that perspective that, you know, if I don't take care of myself, I can't take care of anybody else. So literally, I'm always shocked when, you know, I'll get a guy who's had a coach since he was five years old, look at me and go, gosh, I never thought about, you know, I would need a, a, a business coach, you know, I, I never thought, you know, that would help me. And you're like, the same way that I felt like, I'm like, how did I not think that a trainer would change my life? Like I having a health coach, oh, geez, Dave, you know, never thought that would change my life. And more people take better care, especially when we're younger, take better care of our cars than we take care of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, for me, I just, I took a step back and I looked at it very systematically. You know, I said to myself, hey, it looks like I'm doing, you know, probably 15 to 20% more reps. And in those extra 15 to 20% reps is where you're getting the extra 15 to 20% of results. So I'm actually getting you know, 30, 40, 50% more of the results. You know, usually, you know, if I'm by myself, I'd stop at 15 or 16. And, you know, I kept saying plus one with my trainer, we always go to 20 or 21. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you just look at it super pragmatic, having a trainer is an absolute no brainer. Um, and for me, um, before that, I started investing more into health. You know, I was never a guy that took pills every day. And now just like talking to a doctor, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D, spirella, Corella, all, all that stuff. So for me, as I, you know, get into, you know, my 30s, I'm really starting to invest into health and fitness because for me, you know, especially now it's a very scary time, like your health is absolutely everything. So I completely agree with everything you're saying. And for me, I looked at that trip. I mean, there was a million things that I learned, but I think for me, uh, the trainer was first and foremost. That's so awesome. And then beyond that too, I think you, if you look, you know, I talked about the 1% better iconic uh, sign that I have in one of my studios that people will see all the time. But it's that 10 to 15% better, right? It's not, it's even more than 1%. And I think coaching in general, me mentoring in general, and you can call it trainers, but whatever it is, if you're picking out the specific things where you can get the margins of millionaires, the most progressive results that you can, number one, with your health, two, with your family, three, you know, with your wealth. And, yeah. you know, for, for me, that's why, you know, even on the executive coaching that I do, I can just guarantee quantitatively profit because I know, you know, just like a trainer that I'm going to get 10 to 15% more out of you just by being an accountability partner and pushing you, let alone the situational knowledge and relationships that I have that already give now to, you get to 80 to 800 to 8,000% differences in some people mm -hmm. just by having somebody help you. Um, where do you think there's other places for you that, that same type of strategy, you know, just being in the, the ignorant, arrogant, uh, you know, self-sabotaging individual human beings that we are, you know, have you taken it to the next level and said, hey, if I can do this in my health, what can I do with my personal intimate relationships or two with my wealth and business? Yeah, another big thing that, that I had a big revelation on um, was accounting and legal. So I have a very close relationship with my lawyer. His name is, uh, is Goody Agai. He's actually based in Orange County. And accounting was something, you know, I've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read the Tony Robbins book. 
you know, I've spoke to many, you know, a billionaire, and they always have a very good um, understanding of accounting. And for me, you know, I was a finance major turned entrepreneurship and marketing major, I never did well in school, and I really paid attention um, to accounts payable, receivable, any of the super simple stuff. And for me, uh, that that trip, you know, I had a 30 minute zoom call um, with my business partner, Jeff, um, my accountant and my lawyer and it turned into a two and a half hour call, which then spiraled into a lot of uh, post gym sauna conversations with another guy that I was with on the trip, just talking just about accounting from how we should pay each other, um, you know, life insurance, um, write offs, all that type of stuff, which I literally think I went from, you know, a complete novice, a one out of two of 10 to, uh, you know, now I'm probably at like a six or a seven out of 10. And it's something that for me, you know, it's one thing, you know, you know better than anybody. It's one thing to make the money. It's another thing to keep the money and to, and to grow that money. So for me, um, investing in, in understanding how money works is kind of the next phase of my life where um, now I'm starting to accumulate a little bit of money. My company is starting to grow. Um, you know, as the leader of the company, I need to understand how money works, period. So um, that was another big thing I started doing on the trip with that one really long phone call with my accountant and lawyer. Uh, I continued with one of my good buddies, Anik, who owns uh, another big D2C company. I mean, that's something for me, um, you know, my father is, is pretty adapted. I'm gonna talk to him more about it. And it's just something that I keep asking probing questions to people. How can I get better at that? Um, that's one department in my life. I would say health, fitness, and then accounting and legal are, are two big departments for me that I'm make, looking to make a big push in. Yeah, and they both, you know, literally will change your life. You know, yeah. it's, you know, if you understand just the effect of acceleration growth and compound interest on your health and on your economy, right? Those two things, that accounting and legal, like yeah. people don't really... If, if you can increase the amount of money that you keep by 10 to 15% a year and you're 30 years old, I'm 52, go ahead, do, do the math. And if you can't do it, go ask somebody to do the math and say, you know, I make a hundred grand today. And if I can increase 10 to 15% a year on the accumulative and be able to save it, not make any money with it. Although most people can figure out guaranteed how to make 7% a year on their money. It, you know, with the right assistance, you can should be making 7% without ever paying attention to the money you've saved. Do the math in the 22 years and watch what how, how wealthy you are at 52, my age, simply by just literally looking at the math and the numbers and understanding acceleration growth and compound interest. We were talking earlier with the Howard Stern of healthcare there, Matthew, and yeah. you know, I, I love how he was talking about the inverse proportionality to the outcome. And I think this idea of outcome is a huge factor. In the younger we are, it's the more difficult to understand. But the interesting thing about uh, outcomes and understanding is that you're so young that if you can get a grip on that understanding of outcomes and detaching yourself from the outcome and doing what it takes health-wise, accounting-wise, legal-wise, that that's the people that really accelerate and grow. And the problem is, is that most people get attached to an outcome. And once you're attached to an outcome, it'll never come as quickly as you want it to. And you'll end up quitting. And I you know, keep talking about this lily pond that double, the lilies double in size every year. And if it takes 30 years, people just can't get that it takes 29 years to get to halfway full, right? They think 15 years, it should be halfway full. That's not how exponential growth happens, right? And the scarier thing is in 27 years, it's only an eighth full. And that, you know, people can't wait that long. They don't really see what you see at such a young age is that, hey, look, if I pay attention to this and give it my intention, all the coincidences will take care of themselves. We're looking back already because your business is growing, you're in charge. Last question real quick. Where have you seen your ability to detach from an outcome and see the exponential results? Have you had an area where you're like, wow, this is really, you know, I just did this because I enjoy it. I did my best. And now I have this great outcome. Um, I think it really goes all back to just hiring good people. Um, I really think that if you just step back, business is very simple if you look at it. It's a bunch of people doing a bunch of things. That's all it is. A bunch of people doing a bunch of things. And I think for me, as the company scaled, I had a really tough problem of just kind of elevating and delegating. And, you know, we've made a couple of hires here and there. But about three, four months ago, we made our first, you know, quote unquote, C-level hire. And since we've brought him in, 
you know, I've always looked at a lot of stuff and said, hey, I can do it better than this person. But at some point, you need to delegate it out. And whether they can do it, you know, 70 or 80 percent as good as you can do it, sometimes it's better to, to delegate it out. And I found somebody that was, you know, it's black and white. He is better than me at a lot of things. And to, to be able to hire somebody and to delegate that out and to see them basically execute better than I can execute. I'm at that point now with the company that now I'm just on a hunt to find world-class people because that's how we're going to get to the next level. So for me, um, it was about just hiring people. I made um, I kind of like our first big hire. And now as the company grows, it's really just about acquiring and maintaining talent. Um, and I think for any leader out there, I think that acquiring and maintaining talent is one of the most important um, things that you need to have as a leader, because that's how you get to the next level, getting smarter people. Yeah, when you start hiring now, you'll start learning the lesson that Gary taught me, which is fire fast. And I've never been good at it. And I got to get better at it. Because, uh, per, you know, when people are not aligned with the values or are not capable of doing their job correctly, you got to let them go. And, uh, you know, that's one piece of advice I'll give you as we take off my friend. And thank you so much for all the cool stuff that you've given me all the cool things that you do for everybody else. I'm so proud of you. And you know, if you ever need any help, I'm more than happy to help you anytime, Mark. Last piece, last little snippet I want for, for yeah. now, uh, a great book to read. It's called Traction. Um, and Traction kind of dives into every single element of a company. Um, one of them is about core values and core focus. Um, and one of the big things is about hiring. And a big thing is you could have the wrong person, the wrong seat, the right person, the wrong seat. But ideally, you want to get the right person in the right seat. And you're talking about hiring and firing. A lot of the times you think you, that you should fire them. It could be the right person but the wrong seat. So you're finding the right person and putting them in the right position. So everybody out there, that was a book that changed my life. It's called Traction by Gene Hackman. Um, so check that out. And Dave, thank you so much for the support always, gems always. I appreciate it. Literally, I'm seeing your ads all over the place. And I see in the background, it means the world. It makes me so happy. Your team, <laughs> shout out to your team. So professional, always on point. And uh, yeah, man, enjoy the rest of your week. You got it, man. You can move a weakness and make it a strength. You got it, my friend. Mark right. Brazil, iconic. Check him out. Incredible. Thank you so much, brother. Take care. Awesome. One of my favorite people. What a great young entrepreneur and person. Uh, always enjoy hanging out with him. Jacqueline Burnett, my dear, how are you? That is my niece last cousin. You got to check her out. The Happiness Habitat. My little mentee just killing it there in Michigan. Hopefully healthy and happy as usual. I saw Scott Kaplan on here, one of my mentors, friends, and uh, just an incredible talent. Uh, where are you, Scotty boy? Give me a, a little bit of a look here. I wanna, oh, there he is. I'm going to add you in. Welcome, everyone. Blaine, good morning. Welcome. Uh, great to have you here as well. Thank you, Jake. Oh, in studio with a charger hat behind him. I thought you were anti-charger. What's going on? Well, it says rest in peace, Dean Oh, Spinos. I didn't see that. That's not... <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so it was... I, just, uh, it was... I, I, I don't care. You can talk. I'll just watch you, man. I just love seeing you. I miss you. I haven't seen you in too long. Well, let me tell you a quick story. And by the way, um, the book Traction, I've not read it, but I'm going to get it today based on everything that was just said. I'm getting that book. I need to read it. Um, this past weekend, I was... Um, in Mammoth, California. And it's like, I don't know, maybe Friday or Saturday night. I don't remember what night it was. And I'm flipping through channels. I finally got the TV to come on. I could figure out how to use it. And I, I, I see on the guide, it says um, elevator pitch. And I went, gosh, I know that name because David has told me about that. And I click on it and I wind up watching. I got sucked in. I binge watched like five <laughs> episodes of Elevator Pitch. And I'm telling my girlfriend, I'm like, this is my friend, David Meltzer, who, by the way, is one of the founding investors in my company Sided. So um, I was really, really excited to see Elevator Pitch. I loved it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I'm actually, you know, as we're on hiatus from the studio, I'm doing a two minute drill uh, on the 24th, which will be just me have like 12 uh, kids compete. I give them two minutes uh, for a two minute drill to pitch me and then they get three minutes of feedback. Uh, so a, a little nuance. I just, uh, it's so much fun. Like, I just, it's amazing. Like people get on there and they 
don't listen. You know, my favorite story ever, if people have, is the first season, we couldn't afford to have like all the nuances of like two elevators. And so literally, if you didn't let the person out of the elevator, they would walk past you after you reject them, right? <laughs> it was the most awkward thing because not only they could also hear our conversation about like, this guy's an idiot, you know, like they could hear everything. Right. And it was like so damaging to everything. Anyway, this one guy walks out of the elevator. We had sent him down. It was a horrible pitch. And he <laughs> literally got physically threatening to me and uh, Peter Goldberg. He's like, you guys are going to regret this. I've made $2 million already, blah, blah, blah. And like, like physically, and like the guys came in front of us, you know, and I was like, dude, take a deep breath. I go, maybe during your pitch, you should have told me that you made $2 million. I would have opened the door. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't get mad at me. You never even said you were making money. That was like one of the big problems. So people, you know, they get so far in their own way. Um, speaking of in our own way, sided, right? Yeah. I think it's the most underutilized aspect, especially now. I think with as much conversations that are going on, people want to have the individuality, not just a mass uh, type of communication and that intimacy that's provided, which is why not only did I invest, but part of the reason I invested, you have some of the biggest key investors, guys who have knowledge of this space beyond even myself. And, you know, we went down the list of the billionaires uh, that have invested in the company that have built companies that are legendary, far beyond Dave Meltzer region. I mean, talking billions, um, you know, wh where is cited right now and how can people utilize it? I'd love for them to get a little background. Okay, so first of all, I wanna just say thank you for that. And of course, always, I, I appreciate the fact that you helped me get off the ground. And this is two plus years ago. And, you know, people look at companies and they think, well, wow, that just exploded. That's the, uh, this is instant success. And then you find out that a company didn't start until 2008, nine, they persevered, they battled through. Um, that's our company right now. You know, we have battled through from call it mid-March to where we are today. And we just decided to invest all of our time and energy into creating the best product we could because our business development side went on pause, if you will. And here's, today is just an incredible day that we're together, David. And I have to tell you why. Because when, when um, I had made arrangements with your team to come on today, I was very hopeful that the cited mobile app would be in the Apple App Store. In fact, I expected it. But I will tell you, and anybody who's ever tried to get an app through the Apple App Store knows it is not easy. Okay. And so we applied to Apple. They came back to us with, Hey, fix this. We fixed it. We went back to them. They said, okay, now fix this. And then ultimately this was crazy. Apple said to us, Hey, you're, we're not going to pass your app because you're a healthcare app. And we said, what do you mean we're a healthcare app? There is a discussion link about COVID and about the world of coronavirus and how it's impacting people's lives. And there's a whole discussion and debate happening about it. And Apple mistook it as healthcare. So we had to go fight an appeal with Apple. Well, all of that leads me to this, which is to say, today, this morning, we are live in the Apple App Store. You can download the Sided Debates app this morning. I mean, you talk about the universe, David. You talk about, you know, potential. Um, I'm vibrating right now. I'm shaking literally when I tell you that the, the, the mentorship that you have given to me culminates on a day like today by coincidence of course or maybe not right um, <laughs> but but the sided mobile app if you go into the apple app store your viewers your followers um can can today download the mobile app that you helped invest in two plus years ago and i'm so thankful and grateful that's awesome and everybody when they ban tiktok let's get all the users to <laughs> take that app way more interesting would be cited than TikTok. Uh, you don't have to even put up a video, but you can have actually <laughs> an engaged conversation for a progression. You know, it's also interesting about attention plus intention equals coincidence and how, you know, being a little bit more mature and experienced that we're patient for outcomes, right? And, and I've watched your patience and diligence in really representing the company and the investors so well through, as always, extreme challenges that every entrepreneur faces. But it's fun for me because my mindset was, I was a huge Scott Kaplan fan, right? And, and not, w w even when I was at Lee Steinberg, and who, Lee, by the way, you know, just signed 
a huge legendary, which my heart is singing because, you know, anyone belongs in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it's Lee Steinberg. And if this doesn't at least cement the fact, look, the guy has a disease, it's called alcoholism. He admits mm -hmm. to the disease. He's been sober for a decade now. You know, that's pretty incredible. You know, the, the contract that he wrote with Mahomes and the fact that he did it in his 70s, uh, in a young man's game, mm -hmm. you know, you, you got to give the man some props. He is totally a, a, an intellectual genius when it yeah. comes to that stuff and hu huge fan. But I remember sitting there with Warren Moon as we were at Lee Steinberg and I would always tell him, hey, Warren, you know, do you think maybe you could get me on Scott and BR? You know, I'm, CEO, <laughs> I'm, I'm a CEO of the most legendary sports agency. You think you could, uh, you know, just, you know, next time they ask you to be on, say, hey, you should have my CEO on, you know, and because I grew up in San Diego, I'm a huge Charger fan, huge BR, but like I I listened to your show forever, you know, and as a fan, a sports a guy who's going, these guys know what they're talking about. They're not afraid to and when I started to build my own brand, not only were were you gracious enough to put me on? And and I know the first times because you're a very honest guy, you're like, I'm not really sure what this guy does, but he has a great <laughs> background and I read his book. I like his book, you know? Yeah, I did. And that's yeah. where we kind of started. Yeah. And now it's so much fun for me that Sir Scott Kaplan, you know, blessed to be on the day of the launch of our app in Apple. It's uh, amazing. It, it's just such a cool thing that we're both in an area where we were patient and we both know the talents and capabilities that we have. Uh, and even worse, by the way, our teenagers, you know, are like hanging out every single night which is, uh, I'm thinking that at some point we might be in-laws together here, you know, yeah. like, like we might have, we might have another great 20 years ahead of us that, that could be even better, you know? Well, let, let's just to be honest with everyone, when we die, we want to come back as our kids because they're like <laughs> flying private all over to Montana's and who knows what they're doing, all these kids. Uh, but just, I just got very lucky because I will tell you this, Dave, like when I was a kid, I came from a very blue collar background, you know, my dad came home every day. He had grease underneath his fingernails. Um, for the first part of my life, my dad was an electrician. He had a pair of pliers and a screwdriver in his back pocket every day. Those were the tools of the electrician. Later on in my childhood, my teenage years, my dad became an auto mechanic. He's one of those guys who could fix anything, you know, and, and he came home every day with grease underneath his fingernails. And, um, and he owned the gas station, which was also the service station. And I, as a young kid, had to go and pump gas and, and clean windows and fill people's air and check their oil. And I learned my way around the garage. But my father and his father, neither of them went to college. And I was the first person in my family to get to go to college. And it was a really big deal. Um, so I, I, I will say I have this great appreciation. I live in this city of San Diego. Um, I have, through friends and mentors like yourself, learned, learned, because I've been a talk radio host for 25 years. All of a sudden, somebody said to me, you know, you're pretty good at like raising money um, for a horse racing venture at Del Mar here in Southern California. And Which I was said, part of, by the way. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and then they said, well, listen, if you can raise money to get people to, to bet on horses, uh, and own horses, you could probably get people to invest in a real company. And then I finally found my sweet spot, which is media, debate, conversation, the perpetuation of, 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 of your brand when you're not on the radio, but, but when you're trying to engage your audience. And that's how I ultimately got to this company cited. But when you joke about our children being ultra privileged today and going on extravagant trips with friends and, and being around wealthy people, this is something that I as a young kid did not know of that is a gift that you give to your children that normalcy is, um, is, is that you go to school, you start a business or you get a good job. I mean, you know, it, it's, um, it's something that my parents gave to me, I'm giving to mine. Um, and we're, you know, I'm trying to, you know, give them more. Uh, and so it's sometimes when I'm like, Oh my God, my kid's been on a private jet. I didn't even know what a private jet was. Right. You know? <laughs> So. It, but it is to me, I tell people all the time, I have a 10 year old who tells me all the time, I'm spoiled dad. And I love the fact that he just recognizes it, right? And that yeah. I'm okay spoiling you if you know you're spoiled and you still, I, I am like you, my grandfather in Akron, Ohio owned United Auto Parts and you know, the exact same tools. And you know, I, my dad was kind of, you know, in and out of my life, but I was raised by that, you know, my mom and then my grandparents were there. So I saw the six days a week, 12 hours a day, you know, giving back to the community, 
making enough to put your kids through college and graduate school, uh, you know, and then get to share in the experience of my dad being this aloof entrepreneur. And I love, I love the fact that I had the perspective at such a young age of being broke with a mom that worked two jobs, of having a grandfather that had that auto, you know, I think he dropped out of school in the eighth grade, sold tires in the depression out of the back of a truck, saved enough money to open his own auto parts store. He sold it when he was 65 and, and then worked part time just because he wanted something to do, right? Then I had my dad that was, you know, <laughs> that other side of, of me that I had to balance in. You know, I always say what made me all the money was my grandpa, my mom. What lost me all my money was my dad. And then I took, all, <laughs> I took all the lessons and now I'm able to share them with other people so they don't have to go through that journey. Um, Which, by the way, I appreciate because I'll tell you this right now. And, and I, anytime I run into somebody uh, and I, there, I, was, I was on a flight not long ago and I met this young lady who was sitting next to me um, who was wearing a San Diego State athletics sweatshirt. And I said, oh, are you an athlete? Yes. We started talking. Next thing you know, we're following each other on Instagram. And she sees my Instagram and she says, oh, Dave Meltzer follows you. And I said, yeah, he's a really good friend of mine. And she goes, no way. You are friends with Dave Meltzer. So anyway, like it became this big deal to this young lady that, um, you know, that, that you and I had this relationship and I'm trying to remember where I was going with that, but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, listen, I just, I, I guess what I was going to say to you was that your mentorship to me here, here's what I always tell people about you is that, um, I didn't know this about myself that I'm, I'm bad at asking for help. Um, I've gotten better. I, I swear to God, Dave, I have gotten better. I hear you ringing in my ears when I, I'm like, gosh, I need some help, man. And I, I should just ask for a little bit of help and, and let's just go for it. And I, I was just was one of those guys. I just didn't, I just, I can do everything on my own, you know, but, but I have learned through your mentorship very much so that it's okay. Ask for some help. It's okay. And by the way, in asking for help, Oftentimes, in fact, more often than not, the people who are being asked for help are like, sure, I can help you. Oh, and, and that is, it was just it a makes great piece of advice. Really good. It make, every time I see your name, it makes me feel good. Anytime you ask me, hey, do you know somebody or can you introduce me to Gary or can you do, it makes me feel good. And what I keep training myself is how do I feel when people ask me for help? then it inspires me to ask somebody else because it always makes me feel good when a kid says, Mr. Meltzer, you know, I dream of this. Can you give me five minutes of help? And it, it's like such an honor that somebody would even take my, my opinion, you know, and my, my advice. Dude, um, you want to talk about honor? How about this for honor? You ready? Somebody listens to me on the radio, hears you on the radio with me, and then goes and searches you out and says, I have to talk to this guy. And I can tell you right now, um, I, I've got a guy uh, named Sean Walchef from yeah, Cali yeah. Comfort Barbecue. Cali Barbecue. Yeah. This guy heard you on the radio and found you, had to talk to you, had to interview you, had to get into your brain. Um, I, there, there's another guy, uh, Patrick Williams, who, who heard you on the radio and has now worked for you. Yeah. Um, and, and I will tell you that one time you were in our studio and I had a buddy of mine who's a very colorful character. He's a professional wrestler. He was standing off to the side. You and I are having a conversation face to face. I look over. Here's this professional wrestler. This dude is crying. <laughs> he is crying because yeah. what you said impacted him here. And all this guy wants to do is be a pro wrestler. And he's now in his early 40s and he hasn't become Hulk Hogan yet. But he's not going to stop, man. Brother, he's not going to stop, brother, until he gets what he – but he heard you, and it, it, it really reached him. So, um, man, it's just it's having, having a relationship with you has brought a lot of good to my life, man. Thank you. Vice versa. Well, you know, I want to uh, finish with this, too. It's interesting because I get so much feedback, and it, I tell my wife all the time, I go, isn't it interesting? Like, people will tell me that I've changed their lives and made millions of dollars for them. And in, in both aspects, right? Their personal life, I've changed their perspective and made them happy, or I've actually pragmatically given them an advice or an introduction that has affected millions of dollars. And the two reasons that they're so grateful for me is I either taught them to say thank you every day, which has changed their life, or I've, I've taught them to ask, <laughs> okay? And so like, I make a big joke in my house. I was like, do you realize how blessed I am that I've taken two of the oldest lessons that I've ever learned, probably the first lessons that I've ever learned to say thank you 
and to ask for what you want, right? And we both, and I will tell you, one person that had a great influence in my life, who's, you know, my favorite train wreck, I call him. He has a heart this big, but he is absolutely hilarious. But Bensie Glenn, uh, who's a former NFL 11 year, second round draft pick, who I love, is the biggest heart. That guy every day would tell me, Dave, you don't get unless you ask. You don't get unless you ask. And I swear that rings in my head all the time because I don't think if Vincey Glenn didn't live by that, I don't think Vincey Glenn would be here if he didn't ask. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, yeah. he lives off of asking. Yeah. And he, and he deserves it because he has a heart of gold. But I think it's so funny that, hey, if you're going to take away two lessons from Scott Kaplan and Dave Meltzer, to be grateful, which you always are, and we don't even have to go into your Scott and BR story, how grateful you are to BR for you know, early on days and how grateful he is to you for now and both of your support in that relationship, but to ask, right? And so uh, please, everyone, I'm asking you, you got to check out Sided, uh, not because I'm an investor, because it literally will be the future of communication that these intimate conversations, the deeper conversations that don't necessarily need trolls involved or ignorance involved, all the things that I think diminish the capacity of people commenting, you know, it all it takes one bad egg on the, the comments when someone starts yeah. going right here. Right. Like yeah. You wish you could. Hey, let's just talk aside. Let, let me understand where you're coming from, especially right. with the issues we have today. It's good. Hey, we got to learn from each other. There's no way unless we have private conversations we can learn. And that's what side is about to me. Right. And uh, David, I'm so glad you say it because it really is building a community. You know, um, you you might have on your Facebook page, you might write something and then, man, you might piss off half your friends. People might un unfriend you. People might not ever talk to you again for expressing an opinion. And then what happens is on Facebook, somebody says something and then boom, 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 boom. And it's just a big, long chain of a conversation that never ends. And the same thing goes on Twitter. When somebody posts something, all of a sudden it's trolls and it's hate and it's, it's F you and it's, it's, it's right away toxicity. Uh, what we've created at Cited is, look, an opportunity for the average everyday person to create content. Um, the, the user generates the content and they post content. They ask you what it could be something as simple as do you prefer Coke to Pepsi? But it might be something more intricate like are you going to vote for Trump, Biden, or maybe it's Kanye West all of a sudden. And so there's, there's lots of interesting conversations to be had. And by the way, when you vote and you see the score and then you defend your position, people will then read your comments, add likes to your comments, you'll move up the board, and ultimately there's a competition with your opinions. So besides the idea that it's a more organized place to have conversations, in addition, there's a fun competition going on where people are winning Amazon gift cards. That's what we're using right now. But they're seeing the leaderboard and their status is moving up as their point totals are going up. So there's so much to it. It's actually a lot of fun. And, and today is the day. Everybody who's watching, we got lucky enough today, you know. Uh, preparation meets opportunity. Luck. We, we Attention got plus intention equals coincidence. We got there today. And the Sided mobile app is now downloadable in the App Store for Apple. And I'm just, I'm, I'm over the moon today, David. That is awesome. And I want to quell any of the rumors. Kanye did not reach out to ask me to be his vice president. So, uh, <laughs> not yet. I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not so interested. <laughs> I'll, I, I want to know the vice president. I don't want to be him. So anyway, my brother, let's kick some butt with Sided. Everyone check it out. Join Scott Kaplan and I. We cited, if you haven't checked out Scott, he's at Scott and, Kaplan. And, and Dave, hey, how about this? Do you know this? I don't even know if you know this or not. Um, coincidence again, I'm filling in right now. I'm doing radio in LA. I'm on ESPN 710. I'm on from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Pacific time. So if you're in your car today, turn on the radio. If not, maybe use the app or their website. But I'm, I'm back on terrestrial local <laughs> radio in Los Angeles from here in my studio in my house in San Diego. That's how, well, if you ever need a guest, man, I love going on your show too. Uh, so could, let's do this next give, week. Yeah, give Jakey Bakey a call, that's great. And you tell Justin, I'm not paying for the whole wedding, all right? That's <laughs> <laughs> great. I got three daughters, man, I'm gonna go broke. Me too, <laughs> me too. I'm gonna, go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind here with three teenage daughters right now. I got, by the way, how about, I, got, I got one leaving for college this Friday. 
Uh, the whole college is online, but the soccer team is still going to train. Yeah. Well, she's awesome. So just be grateful, right? Enjoy yeah. them. Yeah, All right, my friend. You. Excited. Check it out. Scott Kaplan as well on ESPN. Uh, anytime you need anything, Scott, all you have to do is ask. You're Back to you, friend. brother. Thank you. Thank man. you. That's awesome. Wow. What a great group of people today, huh? Matthew, Mark, and Scott, thank you so much. Team Meltzer, thank you so much. Uh, at Scott Kaplan, cited. Check it out. Training on Friday will be time management, time uh, acceleration, time bending, everything about time. If I can teach you what I've learned about time, you can beat people with math with very little talent. I'm living proof. Mia Meltzer, welcome to the show. My darling daughter, how are you? And uh, hopefully I did not cross the line of fatherhood. Um, anyway, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Please join me. And if you haven't registered, you can just email me for free books, free training, free exercise for the pitch competition, david at dmelter.com or reach out to 949-298-2905. It's pinned below. Uh, check out Mark, Matthew, and Scott. I appreciate everyone. And remember, most importantly, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Have a wonderful day. See you Friday.